Welcome back to the Big Board. Interesting times. We have, I think we're in turn three here. That's only a three turn scenario. Uh, we've run these chip pools with uh, this game, R Rise of the Roman Republic. And you uh, have, if you've seen the other videos, you'll know what's going on. <clears throat> it's a Thunderbolt scenario where covering the first three years of the war where Hannibal invades from the north and all sorts of fun and games ensue. The Fabian uh, approach to defending Rome is uh, in full effect. But given the short nature of the game, uh, only being a three-turn or three-year game, and the significant number of chits that are involved, but, but you know, we're... we're uh, beholden to the order in which things come out, uh, we, uh, we are seeing that the Carthaginians really have a hard time of doing as well or better than historical, number one. Number two, that the Romans <clears throat> really cannot afford, uh, unless they have extraordinarily good luck, uh, to uh, attempt to take on the Carthaginian forces, in particular, if Hannibal is leading. And uh, it's, a, it's been an interesting little experience. And I think this might have actually been the, uh, the game ender here, even though I still have probably a, ooh, I want to say, eight chits to go. Uh, this is kind of like the, the breaking the back of, of both forces, in, in fact. And we'll get to why that is the case in a second. So let's sort of zoom in here. Knowing that uh, this, all these forces here are uh, right here, just uh, three hexes from Rome. And the other forces that are arrayed around the board are either sieging or about to siege or are disrupted or <clears throat> are positioning to block and things of that nature. And so let's, uh, let's, so let's zoom in and have a look at our dictator, which is, uh, good luck pronouncing that dude's name, Verucosis. It's facing off against Hannibal, and he has two full consular armies, one of which has six uh, Gallic or uh, auxiliary infantry. And uh, he's facing off against Hannibal, who is both disrupted, uh, and, but he also has uh, the Carthaginian uh, uh, fourth army as well, which is primarily cavalry and elite cavalry, that and some infantry. Uh, a total, I think, of approximately, where was the numbers here? 24 infantry and 28 cav uh, between the two forces here. This, of course, has 72 infantry, 76 or 77 if we include the, uh, the auxiliaries that were added, and 16 cav. Uh, so a total of uh, 110 uh, combat factors, I think, thereabouts. Sorry, that's not correct. That's the uh, that's the attrition value. That's going to be 80, uh, 90 something. <laughs> 90, uh, I'll get there, 93 factors. So when we look at all of that and we go to calculate a battle, and what I did do was I, first of all, I looked to see whether or not I wanted to avoid and whether that would make sense. But in order to make that decision, we really had to kind of work out what the odds might look like uh, just to get a feel for things, right? And uh, there's a lot of moving parts for the uh, for both sides, for the Carthaginians and for the Romans. So let's let's kind of goof around with this a little bit and have a look. <clears throat> the The Romans decided that you know, they have a dictator. They have Rome is secure, and it has a substantial amount of forces in it that will not be able to be taken this turn even with three siege uh, chits. Now, there might be a slim uh, chance that Hannibal could use guile and force a treachery result, and it could potentially fall that way. Although I would argue that, uh, that Rome uh, should be beyond any attempts at treachery. So that, that's an outside chance that we, we may or may not look at once we get past all of this. So they decided not to avoid, and they decided to stand and fight. And uh, the Romans went, huh, okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Let's do it then. 
the first thing that they elected to do to get the extra uh, uh, column shifts or uh, sorry DRMs on the combat was this guy sacrificed sacrificed himself. He did a devotio, which meant that he would lead the forces into battle, and we get to take half of his uh, campaign rating and use that as a modifier for the combat. So we took all the all the factors and we ended up, I think it was a uh, two to one uh, combat uh, thereabouts. And the net result of all the DRMs, given that this guy rolled very low and Hannibal rolled a seven, uh, even though he was disrupted and even though uh, we, uh, he did have an elite leadership going on, uh, elite cavalry and the elephants had no effect, we ended up with a net uh, modifier to the die roll of six. And we rolled a seven for the result, which brought it down to a one. And that is not good for an attacker. That meant that the attacker would lose 15% of his forces, be forced to retreat because the result was in bold. And what would end up happening here is that these chaps would basically not even uh, take a loss uh, the way things would work out uh, because your your losses for every for every uh, 3d RM more than these guys than your opponent you get to reduce your losses by five percent so they they take in essence no losses but they would of course both forces would now be disrupted. I don't think you get to, uh, placed in a disorganized mode. It's something I would have to check uh, because it just says you disrupted, and it's not like two disruptions equal the disorganized or anything like that. It's a it's a disorganization and disruption are a function of the the result of the of the combat. <clears throat> so these guys, of course, would be disorganized because they lost and they had to retreat. And here are what here are how here are their losses. Oh, and of course, with, with the loss, <laughs> you get to have uh, the most fun part of the game: pursuit and butchery, which means that you take the cavalry differential uh, from the cavalry table uh, as uh, as of uh, net of uh, losses of both sides from the battle, and then you multiply that. You take that number, roll a d uh, d ten, and multiply that number. Uh, against the differential, and that gives you your percentage of incremental losses you take here. And so uh, the net was uh, the two Roman armies here, the two consular armies, took a combined loss of 28 infantry and 6 cavalry. So if we look at the uh, total forces, we had 77 uh, factors, I think 70, sorry, 78 factors, and uh, that would then bring us down to 50 factors spread across two Roman legions and six cavalry, which is basically wiping out uh, all of the cavalry for one consular army. Not that you would do that because you've got to spread the losses. And the losses that we took, knocking that down to 50, meant that each consular army uh, is going to lose you know, almost, uh, almost half of their force, which is pretty bad. <laughs> Not only that, this guy dies because he did Devotio, and this force then ends up just being disorganized and retreat is gonna retreat three hexes. And so now it is a leaderless force, and I think we have to do something special with that. So he retreats to the two or three hexes, I think. Uh, can't retreat into Rome, so we will retreat into this, and let's call it two hexes, and we'll retreat to here. Uh, you can't see that it's off map, but I'm going to put that there. These fellas will all... Uh, uh, I think they were here. These other guys. It's something like that. Something in, in, in that sort of format. So that is what happened. Now, what that means is... Let's just see what the next chip might be. Yeah, siege attrition. So we would go through a siege exercise. Uh, we would look at all the other places that have sieges and we would resolve that and let's see what the next one is. The next one's Margo. Uh, that's his final one. He has nothing he can really do and there's another siege attrition. 
and uh, then the dictator comes out again. And now this is where I wouldn't know what to do. I'd have to stop the video here and have a look. Uh, but here's the net result for when we look at the big, the big picture here. We needed to capture, uh, first of all, we needed to have major victories to reduce the number of provinces that we had to capture. This counts as a major victory, and this would be the second major victory. And I think that means, if I look at the scenario outline, that we would now only require five contiguous Roman provinces uh, that began the game uh, in Roman control. And I have up here one, two, three, not contiguous. So the question would be, can we, can we capture this town here? We would go through the siege attrition exercise with this army, with Barker. Uh, if that happened, that would give us one, two, three out of four, five. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was getting, uh, I still would need one more. This guy would have to, oh no, this is, this is controlled. So assuming this fell, that would count as another, another uh, place that we would control. And that is still not contiguous. We would need to capture this area here. And that would mean that this siege here would have to be successful. Uh, one, two, Three, four, five. That would give us the five if that happened. So this might be well worth playing out over the next couple of turns. So I've got uh, I've got two siege attritions to go resolve, and we'll check back in a little while. Whoops, nearly knocked the camera over. Check back in a little while and see if Hannibal can do uh, do what needs to be done. But at this point, both sides are in a lot of trouble, and so I, I would imagine that if this was the full. Uh, proposed version of the game uh, Thunderbolt uh, versus the scenario of Thunderbolt that we both sides would be looking licking their their chops and wondering just how they were going to exploit or recover from the current situation that they're facing so it's very very interesting gameplay lots of replay value in this scenario just deciding which way you're going to go how are you going to acquire military control of all these little villages to give you the and uh, give you enough to, to, to gain control so you can put your little control marker down uh, that i'm using here and uh how will you prevent the romans from interfering with those control efforts because keep in mind if if the romans had have chose to do, to do something different with their dictator and left hannibal alone maybe they could have come up here and, I don't know, uh, dropped off a big force in one of these towns uh, to prevent the majority of the towns being controlled by the Carthaginians. Or they could have headed on up and uh, spoilt, the, spoilt the control by recapturing and sieging one of these towns. And, uh, you know, if the dicta dictator would have had, uh, if he had still been alive and had not attacked, he could have moved up and sieged one of these towns and perhaps thrown the control away, taken it away from the, from the Carthaginians. And that would have ended the game pretty much then and there. Because once you, lose, once you lost one of these, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to bring enough forces to bear, particularly with two consular armies. They could just retreat inside the castle or the city. And, uh, you know, eat, eat the attrition. Who cares how many forces you lose as long as you have enough to keep control of the city. So that, that's, the, that's the strategy that I probably should have employed. But I thought with two consular armies and a sort of half-decent leader, he had a, you know, that six campaign rating and the devotio capability, but he is E-rated versus A-rated. So that uh, was never going to bode well. And then rolling a one versus a seven didn't help. So fascinating gameplay. If you can get a copy of this game, it's going to probably cost you 50, 60, 70 bucks, but it's well worth getting. There's a lot of interesting scenarios here. Some of them come down to the last chip pull and a little bit of lucky die rolling, but this particular scenario seems to play out very nicely. All right, all the best. Ciao.